So here we are live at our Oikos chat live session, episode number three. It's just so this is all just so exciting and it, I'm imagining that this is an incredibly inconvenient time for South African families. But maybe there's people out there that are not in South Africa and the time isn't quite as convenient. The reason why I say I think it might be con inconvenient time is the fact that it's five o'clock and I know five o'clock means po possibly dad's arriving home and it's dinner and it's getting children maybe bathed or whatever it is. It's generally a bit of a crazy time in households between dad's arrival home and bedtime. So I'm guessing this isn't the greatest time to be doing a live stream as far as time frame is concerned. But let me tell you why we are here at five o'clock on Tuesday, the 20th of February, 2018, doing a live stream. And that is we actually came to do it around about three and we were sort of going to try three o'clock or four o'clock, but a storm came in. And it's still trying to remind us of its existence. Every now and then I hear a faint rumble in the distance. But we actually can't risk having computers on and cameras and everything when there's storms because we have the most horrendous um, electric storms here in this part of the world. KwaZulu-Natal Midlands. It, they really are severe. So we've got this storm protocol. When we hear a rumble, everything gets shut down and unplugged, pulled out from the walls because we've had some pretty serious calamities when it comes to storms. So now we don't take the chance. But this has all led to the fact that now we are thinking we're not going to be able to schedule this live streaming on a sort of set time. We're going to try. We were going to set it for every Thursday at four o'clock. That was our aim. But this Thursday at four o'clock, we're going to be having a little bit of a sad party. But we're going to make it joyous. And that is one of our very, very precious, darling servants of the Lord here at Oikos is going to be, it's going to be her last day with us on Thursday. That is Mrs. Brown, we like to call her, Auntie Barbie. She is moving um, from these parts, KZN Natal, and she's moving and consequently she's going to um, go and support her family. And that means that she won't be here at Oikos anymore. So we're having a little farewell for her because it's her last day on Thursday, which then means that we will not be here doing our Oikos live stream. So our first attempt, maybe, call it that, at trying to put a scheduled time in, isn't actually going to happen due to this factor. So we thought, okay, well, it can't happen on Thursday. Wednesday, we've got other commitments, so let's make it Tuesday. So we jumped at this opportunity and said, okay, let's do live stream today. And then the storm came rumbling in and the rain came tumbling down, which we really pray that it will go to Cape Town, this rain. And so here we are. Tuesday at five o'clock, it might suit people outside of South Africa. I'm not sure how it's going to be for those of you in South Africa, whether this live stream time frame is going to work for you. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to glance down my, at my laptop here and I'm going to see if there's any messages coming in from people that would like to um, ask me. Whatever it is, that's what we're here for. We're here at this Oikos chat live to be supportive to you if we can and answer your questions. So let me just have a look. I think it's working now. I think I've got it going on this side. But in the meantime, while I wait to see if there's anybody connecting, I will just um, continue to chat to you here. Um, I was telling you about the storm. Well, these storms that come in, they really are by surprise. We never know. I mean, actually, in fact, what happened is Jamie, our son, as you know, he's helping with this live streaming. He decided to look on his phone and see if there was going to be, if the weather was going to be good for our live streaming. And he saw that there was going to be, there were warnings of a storm at 2 p.m. <laughs> and at 2 p.m. we heard some rumbles. So it was quite incredible that actually it was correct, the weather report, which is, I find quite unusual. And the storm continued to rumble around and around and on and on and the rain poured down um, at uh, up until four, which is when we were going to live stream. Okay, and so here we are at five. And here we have Tracy. Hello, Tracy. Thank you for joining us. Tracy's from East London. That's exciting. We were actually on a road trip in East London in November last year. I'm just wondering if Tracy was at one of our meetings. 
So thank you for joining us, Tracy. And let me know about this time, Tracy. What do you what do you say about this time of live streaming five o'clock on in the evening? I'm kind of guessing it's not a good time, but if you've been watching and listening, you might have heard that we've had storms and that's why we couldn't live stream when we hoped to. But Tracy, if you have a question, any question that you want to ask me or anything, actually, you know what I was thinking is that I'm sitting here doing this live stream to help people in their home educating journey. And then I thought, you know, it's actually, I'm here for anybody, any question they want to ask. It doesn't necessarily have to be about home educating. It can be whatever question it is that they feel like they would like to have the opportunity um, to ask me. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm here to answer the questions, whatever they may be. For example, somebody might ask me, what's my favorite color? I'm not sure what that's relevant to anything, but if they did, I would tell them it's green. I like green because it depicts growth for me. So that's my favorite color. Not that it matters to anybody, but anyway, I thought I would just tell you that. And I'm very thrilled to see that we have um, people joining us here on our live stream. So thank you for that. Um, back to the storms. And Tracy's joined us here and she has tell, told me that she's from East London. So I'm wondering what the weather's doing down there because I'm really, really hoping and praying for more rain in the Cape. We all know, all of us South Africans know how desperately needed that is. So I, I do hope because, I mean, we, we had such a downpour earlier on and every time the heavens open here, I just think, oh, Lord, please send it to the Cape. They need it more, you know, urgently than we do. I nearly said more badly. That wouldn't have been right. All right. So looking down again at my computer, I'm going to get used to this looking up and down. But now Mariana. Mariana, I hope I'm saying that correctly. And you're from Cape Town. And I've just been talking about Cape Town. I'm wondering if you've had rain. We had rain here this afternoon. I asked the Lord to send some your way. So I'm just wondering if you've had Cape, if you've had Cape Town, if you've had rain there. So ladies, thank you. Thank you for joining me in, in this live streaming moment. And please tell me, let me know about this time frame. Because as I've said a few times now, I'm thinking it's really a bad time, but I'm just grabbing the moment when we've got, because the, st the storm did pass by and we we're all ready to do live stream. So we thought oh, we'll do it anyway, even though it's five o'clock and maybe a bad time. But how is the time for you? If you can tell me, you ladies, that your moms that have joined me here on the live stream, thank you for joining me. I do appreciate having your presence and your company. And I would just love to hear from you what, what you think of the time frame. Tell me about the weather. I know it's a strange topic to have on our Oikos live stream chat time, but it's, it's an important matter at the moment. We all know that the Cape needs rain. So let me know about that. And I'm going to see if it comes through here. Oh, that is good news, Mariana. Am I saying your name right, I wonder? I hope so. But Mariana has just commented that it, the Lord did open up the heavens last Tuesday. Seems like Tuesday is the day for the rain. And it rained in, and, and hailed in the Cape. Thank the Lord for that. So whereabouts in Cape Town? Never mind, you don't need to get into the details of whereabouts. I was just wondering where that rain poured down. Unfortunately, I can't see your faces very well here. I'd like to be able to see your faces. I'm trying to see how to do that, how to be able to see the person who's joining me here on live stream. Um, maybe I'll get clever at this and I'll be able to do it eventually. But for now, thank you for joining me. And what would you like to ask me? Thank you for your comments. Oh, I'm so glad, Mariana, that I'm actually saying your name correctly. Thank you for that. That's good to know. Oh, but you do need to start dinner soon. That is exactly what I thought. Oh, I have an idea. I know what I could do at these live streams. I could help people maybe with very, very quick meals. Because I know in all the years that we were home educating, I had to come up with some very creative, fast ways to make food. A good, healthy, nutritious meal for the family. And I really... I'm serious when I tell you that I could achieve that in 15 or 20 minutes. So you might wonder how and what I actually did. But one of my go-tos was pasta. While the water was boiling to put the pasta in, I'd be making the sauce. And then the water would come to the boil. I'd throw the pasta in. It would take 10 minutes to come, you know, to be cooked. 
and within 20 minutes we were eating our meal. So that was always a quick one. Pasta was a good go-to. Not everybody eats pasta though, so. Right. Oh goody, Mariana, you're new to this whole home educating journey. Well, welcome to this home educating journey. And I really hope you're going to enjoy every step of the way. I hope you join me again on the live chat. So if you've got some questions that come up in your journey, you can ask me. And I hope to be here to help you. Oh, and Tracy as well. Well done, Tracy. You're also new to home educating. Hmm, you're learning things that you did not know about yourself. Well, isn't that the case for every one of us? I often say to parents that actually um, this home learning lifestyle journey is very much about the parents' growth. <laughs> because I love Konos that we are actually training children in obedience and patience. And here we are, the parent, training our children in these characteristics. And in the meantime, we are having to grow in them ourselves because we have to be an example of patience while we're training our children to be patient. So there's a lot that we learn about ourselves on this journey. And it's good, 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 because we just grow. We grow with that, with our children, and we grow in the Lord, and we grow in our characters, we hope. Because one thing I must just comment on here, and that is that people say to me, well, they don't think they'll be able to home educate because they don't have the patience. And my answer to them is, well, do any of us, you know, all of us are lacking patience. None of us have enough. But fortunately, when we have the Lord, we've got more than sufficient. So I used to have to depend on him. When I felt my patience was wearing thin, then I would just call on him because I knew that he had abundance of patience for me. So it, it, that's another part of the whole journey is learning to call on God to help us because he's there for us and he would like to help us. But you're quite right, Tracy. It is quite a journey of learning and growing with the children. Oh, good. Um, Morian, Tracy says that she uses her slow cooker a lot. That is another tip, actually, that I used to do that as well. Throw the food in the pot in the morning and turn it on. And by the evening, we had this lovely, nutritious stew or whatever it might have been. The slow cooker is fantastic. Oh, I must tell you something I told my parents the other day about the slow cooker, and they were quite amazed. And I myself was amazed that I hadn't told them years ago, but anyway, they know now. And that is we use our slow cooker to make muesli. What we do is we put in the coconut and oats and nuts and everything that we want. I just leave the raisins out because sometimes they go a bit fat and can get even burnt, believe it or not. But we put all this into the slow cooker the ingredients that you would normally use for muesli, whichever ones you want. And then I just stirred it with a big wooden spoon every now and then during the course of the day. And you start smelling this beautiful smell of um, muesli cooking. Now, you know, sometimes you have to put it in the oven to roast it or cook it a bit, and you get that lovely aroma that comes from the, the oven. Well, it, the same thing happens with the slow cooker. The difference is, it's hard to burn it in the slow cooker, whereas it's easy to burn it in the oven, especially when you've got so many children or things to attend to. So try using the slow cooker for muesli. Give it a go because it, you, I just found that to be so, so helpful. And again, it's a nice, convenient, quick, nutritious meal to give to the children. Yes, Marianne, I agree with you that it is a calling from the Lord. And when we follow with him and after him regarding this calling, he helps us. He helps us along the way. And it is just, it's a fantastic journey. I'm excited to be able to do, to do this Oikos Chat Live so that I can share all the goodness with the people that are choosing to walk this walk. And from what I'm gathering here, the ladies that have joined are new, um, new at this journey, new at this um, walk of learning at home and teaching your children at home. So I'm looking forward to sharing the journey with you. Hope we can help you. Fantastic. That's the place to start, Tracy. Start in the word, spend time in the word. Can't go wrong. You absolutely can't go wrong with that. <laughs> that is that is a a good comment there. Thank you there for that comment, Rista. She says, my friend's response when people say they aren't patient enough to homeschool is don't blame your sinful nature on home education. <laughs> That's a good one. I'm going to remember that one. 
don't blame your sinful nature on home education. It is just so true. Oh, it's a good idea. And you know, I think this recipe thing, this Mariana was just saying that it's, she gets bored with her own same old recipes. It's so true that we, we just need some inspiration often. And sometimes it's just nice to hear something new, a new idea and something exciting and quick. And I think all of us can just help one another when it comes to the household factors. Um, there's so many little household tips to just to actually support one another on this journey. And I'm hoping that that's something that this live chat will, will be doing, is that we'll be able to support one another with daily household tips that actually to support the entire journey of home educating so that we have more time to love our children. You're going to hear me saying this over and over, that children spell love, T-R-M-E. And the goal is to not spend so much time on household matters and not enough time with the children, but rather draw the children into spending time doing the household things with them. So you spend time with them because that's what, how they spell love. And also find ways to minimize the amount of time you have to spend on household things, including um, being in the kitchen, because you don't need to spend hours and hours there to prepare a meal. Give me a moment. Excuse me, ladies. I'm just quickly having a look at some of the comments. Oh, it's such a pleasure to do these videos. Marianne, it's such a pleasure. You are most welcome. And thank you for your appreciation regarding the videos because basically the point of the videos is that very thing is that it would be supportive and helpful to people and so we have as you gather spent many hours in fact we can also thank James he's sitting there behind the camera at the moment because he's he's our media man I could never have done all of this without him I mean I couldn't have do it single-handedly so I'm very very grateful for a son that has been so uh, behind this and alongside this and it doesn't actually stop there. We've got this whole little Oikos team going on. You know, we've got um, our son-in-law, Bruce, who does the website, and our daughter, Missy, who, support, who supports him in that. And now he's got his brother on board. And so, and then we've got our whole Oikos team there at the base, which includes our darling Mrs. Brown, who's leaving us on Thursday. But she's been very, very helpful with all the customer care, as they like to call it. I like just to stay, say that we here just to serve serve people in the best way we can and care for them. So with Mrs. Brown moving on, um, we have somebody new who's joined to be able to continue to support in that capacity. And that is Mark. So we'll be introducing you to Mark. I think he's, I don't think he's been around the videos yet. It'll come. And you're enjoying Picture Smart. Picture Smart to me is invaluable. I do hope that um, you as well have got your own student book <laughs> when it comes to the Picture Smart uh, resources. It's nice to be involved with the children. And Tracy is saying how much her daughter loves science. In fact, Tracy, on our last live streaming, when um, Rista asked a question, I see Rista's joined us here as well. And she asked a question about the science and also commented on how much they as a family love the science. Thank you, Tracy. I'm going to tell Mark that you welcomed him. That will be very, very good. He's kind of been thrown in the deep end. Um, at, uh, so we have to all just support him there. But I, I think he's doing wonderfully. His heart's in, the, in a good place and he's here to serve and to help everybody. And we've also got live chat on our Oikos website. So when people have a question just suddenly comes to them and they want to just jump on the Oikos website and text a live chat question, Mark's on the other side there to answer it answer those questions as best he can. And he's spending a lot of time watching a lot of the videos like Marion was talking about, Mariana was talking about all the videos and that they've been helpful. Well, actually, um, Mariana, the videos have been helpful to Mark as well because he's getting the heart that way. He's seeing what all the Oikos Ministries is about and, and why we are here and what we are here for to support and serve home educators on this journey. And so he's growing and learning about all of that while he's there ready to step in when our darling Mrs. Brown moves on. And Marianne says something else here. I'm just scrolling down and I see that you said you sometimes do double meals and freeze some. Good idea. That helps too. I used to do that. I used to do, you know, 
if you're going to, especially on the weekends I found, I would cook a bulk and then I knew that I had some other meals for the week in case I ran out of that precious commodity called time to actually spend time in the kitchen to make meals. I knew I had my backup plan in the freezer. It is helpful that. Well, thank you. Um, Rista's just commented here about how people with little children are struggling uh, to get to the all the different uh, tasks of the day, especially the learning part of it. Maybe they've got older children that really need some time with their language lesson or their maths lesson, but then they've got a three-year-old and a one-year-old and maybe even a baby on the way, and they're really struggling with home educating and trying to do all that they feel that they need to do. Well, my answer to that, I've actually covered that just quite a bit in a lot of the other emails that, uh, emails, what am I talking about? Uh, a lot of the other videos that I've done about how to cope with that very scenario. But what I would say to those moms is to not actually try and put too much pressure on themselves and stress themselves too much about it. Because let me just, for an example, paint a picture here. Let's say they've got an eight-year-old that they, the mom is feeling they really need to get to their lessons and they've also got a five-year-old and a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Now the one-year-old and three-year-old are going to be the, re requiring the most time it would appear because when a baby's crying it needs to be attended to and when the three-year-old has fallen over and crying because they hurt themselves that three-year-old needs to be attended to and so it would what would happen from that one would think just considering the realities, is that the eight-year-old would be waiting for mom to come to do the lesson. Now, what the mom will find is she will settle into that, as in when the child, the three-year-old, is needing her attention, she will be able to attend to the three-year-old quickly. I can give some tips on that. And then get back to the, the child that's waiting. Or she can say to the child that's waiting, oh, dear, look, your brother's fallen, sister is fallen, I need to go and tend to give me 10 minutes. I'm going to need to go and help the small, the younger child, and while um, you're waiting for me, do the following. So the mom can, that's going to take 30 seconds to tell the child to do the following. Even better still, the mom can have some time um, preparing in her mind and in her heart, what what am I going to do when I'm having a crazy day? And just I just feel I'm pulled in every direction. And now at the end of the day, she thinks I never got to the language lesson and I never got to, I never got to, and that's how she's going to, be feeling perhaps. In that instance, what the mom can be doing is she can pre-plan those kinds of days in the event that those sort of days will happen. And pre-planning them could go in, in a few ways. One example is I used to have um, Tupperwares, not Tupperwares, they're like plastic bins with lids on, they're very um, easily available, readily available all over the place, game and macro and wherever. And they're these tubs, these crate type things. And I used to put in the one crate, say blocks, and another crate, a whole lot of Play-Doh things, tools, Play-Doh tool, you know, things to use with Play-Doh, matches to make hedgehogs. Or and obviously I had to keep making the Play-Doh and refreshing it. So I would make sure I had enough Play-Doh for a couple of weeks. I'd get the older children to help me make the Play-Doh because then I'd say to them, come and help me make the Play-Doh. I'm going to teach you how to make Play-Doh so you can make Play-Doh in the future and then what happens is the child, the older child, the eight-year-old, has helped to make the play-doh and now when that older child needs time with mom for their language lesson, mom quickly goes to the fridge to get out the play-doh to give it to the younger child and takes out the play-doh crate and gives the little child the play-doh and the play-doh crate and goes back to the older child to continue with the lesson. So it, if, if that's an, an, just a small quick example of how one can be intentional as in pre-planning, planning for these crazy days. Um, by doing so, you are involving the whole family. So everybody understands that the reason why we're making Play-Doh on Saturday afternoon is so that we've got Play-Doh in the ready for when the little one is needing, having a week or a day where they're requiring a lot of mom's attention. So that is just one example of one crate. But let me tell you what I did. I, I must have had half a dozen or maybe even more of these crates. And I had some for the little little one, the, the babies and nappies, whereby I had 
a variety of different teeth and rings, not just the same toys um, repeatedly given to the baby or the little, the, the youngest. Uh, there was a variety of different um, containers with different selection of toys in them. So when it came to the toddler, it would be a certain kind of toy, toys, but not just one selection. There would be five or six selections, five or six crates. And then again with the little one, the, the, the baby, and then even for the older ones. For example, I might have some more advanced puzzles. Or that was in one box. I had just only puzzles. Another box, I had um, different kinds of um, art implements like crayons and cookies and uh, paper and card. And that one was now like an art crate. So when I couldn't get to the maths lesson, for example, we had to abandon midstream because a child broke his bone. That wasn't unusual. Our Jamie had broken something like 30 bones by the time he was 10 years old, something crazy like that. So it wasn't uncommon for us to have a derailed day. But if that were to happen, and now I'm tending to Jamie, and he, because he, he's got a broken bone, and I'm having to phone medical and sort things out, um, I would either involve the other children in the family at that time in this pr actual crisis at the moment, or if it was something that they were now just waiting for me because there wasn't something I could involve them with, I would pull out the appropriate crate such as the art crate. And I would maybe say to, when I say other children, that's because we had other children in the mix. It wasn't just our own. We also had foster children and so on. So I would say to the other children, um, why don't you all make a lovely bookmark or a lovely card? Because now this person's hurting or not well, whatever it is. And um, so you could, while you're waiting for me to help sort out the child that needs my attention at the moment, you can be making a card, a get well card, or draw a lovely picture, or draw a picture that you know is something that makes them smile, and we'll put it in their joy book. And so that is the kind of thing that, that I would do, but it was intentional pre-planning, as you can hear, so that I never needed to feel at the end of the day that I would lay down myself to sleep and I wouldn't be thinking, oh, we didn't get to this and we didn't, and oh my goodness, we haven't done lateral a whole week because I would have to, I might, wait, wait, let me just rephrase it. I might think that, I might think, oh my goodness, we haven't got to any language for the whole week. And then I would know that I need to spend more time and read aloud and I need to be intentional about making a plan for some language lessons to happen the following week. Um, however, I would have to remind myself of the fact that we might not have done language lessons, but the children did draw uh, beautiful pictures for the child that wasn't well, or they helped to make Play-Doh together to, to support the following week when the little ones are needing mom's attention and so on. I'd have to actually intentionally, once again, I'm talking about intentional, being intentional. Um, I'd have to be intentional about what I was um, reminding myself of not just what I haven't done but what I have done and I actually have to really thank our daughter Missy for this because she used to say to me if she even caught me going towards oh I haven't this and I haven't that she'd say but mom what have we done today look at what we have done today <laughs> so she was my little reminder always to remind me to do this which I'm encouraging you in today to be intentionable intentionable I wonder if that's a word intentionable do you think it's a word, Jamie? It's not a word. Uh, he says, no, -uh, it's not a word. He could Google it and see if there's such a thing as intentionable. Quite like that word. Let's be intentionable. Okay. Anyway, I hope that helps. And I've been talking so much now on this topic that I haven't actually even looked at anybody else that might have joined us, such as, I don't know how to say this lady's name, Alicia. I hope that's right. Oh, you need to know where to start with Maths You See. Um, I'll tell you what you can do. You can just go on to the website and do the placement test. If you go to Maths You See, there's a placement test. And do the placement test with them. And then you'll know exactly where to start. Don't think, well, he's this age, so he's going to start at grade this, because that's wrong. I'll tell you why that's wrong, because it doesn't matter about his grade and his age. You can have a 12-year-old that needs to start at alpha, um, because they never, ever really got a good foundation in place. And people go, oh, it's going to be expensive to start back there. And no, 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 don't think like that. Think of the value that you're giving your child. As in, if a child cannot do division, it's very likely it's because they aren't, didn't cope, didn't get 
the multiplication foundation in will. So although they've done multiplication, they maybe don't have enough mastery of it. And so now you buy the multiplication book and think, well, he finished it in six months. So now that was an expensive outlay. No, it's not. It's not. It is a valuable outlay for the sake of your child then being able to do division. <laughs> this is just a quick example. So if you're wanting to know where to start with math, you see, start at the placement tests and sit your child down with the, like at least two or three levels below where you think they are able. Start there and then the, your child will be able to go, oh, look, I could do that. That was easy, mom. Give me another test. And then you give your son the next test. And as soon as you see, oops, he can't cope with that particular sum and he can't cope with that and that he hasn't learned that, he doesn't have that skill, he doesn't have that mastery, and then you see that was the gamma book or that was the delta or that was the prime or the alpha or the beta or the zeta, whichever one it happened to be. And then you'll know that's where to start. That's what I love about the fact that um, we're not just giving you a package here in Oikos and say, what, how old is he and what grade is he and this is where you start. Because one child's strength might be maths and their weakness language and the other one vice versa. We put all of that actually on the starting steps videos on the website. We've, we've did a little series, starting steps one, two, three, four, five. And I hope you can have time to go and watch those if you haven't already. Because there I'm explaining how to do the placements and why you need to do your placements yourself and why you as a parent can assess your child and once you've assessed them you will be able to figure out for yourself exactly where their abilities lie or don't lie. Okay, I'm going to have a look again at my comments here to see if there's any other questions that I can help anybody with. Thank you, Alicia. Did I say it, did I say it right again? I hope so. Um, I'm, I'm thanking you for telling me that I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, oh, Mariana is saying, I wonder if other people can read these comments that are actually joining me on this live chat because I see Mariana has given an input here. She says, don't be scared of going over something because multiplication book has more than just multiplication. Quite right. It covers areas in basic algebra and more. We're at school. Don't cover that with multiplication. Oh, okay. You know what, Mariana? I actually don't know what the schools cover and don't cover and what's in their books and what is in which other curriculum because we've only ever done home education. So um, as you've probably gathered, we've been very engaged and involved in that. So I don't keep abreast with what's happening outside of that, to be honest, with regard to what content in is, is in other curriculum. I really don't know. So all I can do is offer support from what I do know, the experience I have had. And even then, I think my experience is unique to my own circumstances and everybody's got their own journey and their own experience. But um, early on, I was sharing about the crate idea because that was uh, something that I put in place, the different crates um, of different variety of goods in them to, to help me through the day when I had a derailing of a day, which I, I gathered quite quickly in the journey that we were on, that that was going to be part of our life because we had a lot of chronic health situations to deal with. So they became the, the priority in a day and everything else fell off to, you know, behind that, as it were. So the crates became a, a tool to me, to, of this, these crates that I spoke about earlier. If you have only just joined me and you don't know what I'm talking about right now when it comes to these crates, well, then maybe when this is finished, you can go back and watch it because I think it's going to be on Facebook. Is that right, Jamie? Does it stay? This live stream will stay as a post, I think, on Facebook. So you'll be able to see, watch it through again if you're wanting to catch up with the things that maybe you missed because maybe you've just joined us. Hmm. Right. Oh, that's nice. The, the Tracy says they're starting a nature journal. Let me just check um, check with Jamie something quickly. Um, Jamie, these comments I'm see seeing here, the people that have joined this live stream, are they seeing these same comments? So I don't actually need to share what other people are saying with each other because they can see it for themselves. 
Okay, I just learned something. I don't need to be telling you what Mariana said and what Tracy's commented on and so on because you can see it for yourself. So apologies for, for telling you what you already know. And what is the time frame like at the moment? 30 minutes. You see what I did is I did a little bit of research before we started this live streaming and the research told me that you shouldn't go past 30 minutes. Not that there is any rule. But I'm going to ask you ladies now that have joined me to tell me whether you think 30 minutes is a good cutoff time. Or how long do you think these live streams should be? And what about this time? I mean, it's five o'clock. You must, like I think Tracy said she has to go and do dinner. Or somebody said they have to go off and do dinner. Okay, Mariana, that is what will happen. Your son will go over the... Um, uh, the work quickly if he's already kind of familiar with it but as he progresses through the book it might slow down a little bit so he might start off fast and just do six pages in a day um, it's not going to always be like that because as they start getting more challenged it can actually start being where they only want to do half a page a day and then you've got to encourage a bit more if you know that they're capable of more but then, of course, you don't want to push them beyond what they're capable of. And then they have a negative experience of that. We don't want that. That, that no. We don't want that. Oh, my goodness. They've really finished lesson 20. Okay, I see you really are flying. But I think you can comfort yourself with, with knowing that, you know, you are absolutely certain after this that your son has really, really got the foundation in. And he's going to be... Not just skilled, but he's going to have mastery of this multiplication, which is going to make the division steps easier, the delta book. The delta is a bit of a jump. Some people really find it uh, quite a leap from gamma to delta. It's just taking it into higher skills. So it's good that, that you've got this foundation going good and solid there. Oh my goodness, that's so exciting. Jamie, Tracy's making dinner. And while she's making dinner, I wonder what she's making for dinner. Now I'm curious. While she's making dinner, she's live streaming. So now I'm talking to her in her kitchen while she's making, I think. Um, Tracy, are you on your phone? Are you watching this live stream on your phone? I'm just wondering how I'm in the kitchen with you. Oh, good idea. Good idea, Marianne. You must slow it down. That's the, yeah, you got it all sorted. Mariana's got it all sorted. I'm, I'm sure she has. It sounds like it's going really well. The most exciting part about this is your son is enjoying maths. Let that be the case on every level of his learning. As soon as he's not enjoying something, that's a warning. I used to see that as a warning, a barometer. Let's take that away and start uh, doing that same topic, that subject, whatever, in a different way, like practically. Like if a child is crying over their maths book, I just used to put the maths book away. And then we did maths practically in the kitchen and so on. And just keep that as your, your barometer measure. Don't want tears of a learning. You know, my mother used to say, there's enough difficulties in life without making learning one of them. So make learning a joy. Uh, that, that's what I used to hear from her. Learning must be a joy. Don't discipline them in learning. That's the last thing. If you need to discipline your children because they've been disrespectful or, or whatever they've been that they need discipline for, um, don't do it in the learning process. Rather separate learning from discipline. Some people don't agree with that. They say, oh, well, no, but they've got to learn to obey me. And they must, if I tell them they must do this lesson, they must do it. Some people might think of it in that way. And then so be it. But in our household and in our family and what I was taught from my mother is separate disciplining your child for negative or wrong behavior outside of the lesson. Don't let them become blurred. And so that's just a principle we carried through as much as possible. I don't think my children found learning to be something that was a discipline to them. Is that right, Jamie? Did you feel disciplined in your learning? No, he says no, he didn't. It was, was it a joy? I don't want to put words in your mouth. He's going, he's keeping quiet. He could, if he spoke now, if he said something, I think you would, you would hear him. Is that why you're saying nothing? So your voice doesn't come. <laughs> it's just grinning now. Okay. Oh, Tracy's told us what she's having for for dinner, fish and vegetables and potatoes. Fish is my favorite food. If I've got to choose when I'm out to go for a meal, it'll be fish. Just love fish. Love, love, love fish. Fish and cheese, my favorite things. Okay, we just do one exercise per lesson and test, but we'll start doing more with new work. 
Well, that's it's, it's a good idea to do it that way, Mariana, just to not sit and do all the work just because the work sheets are there. That's also, that was, it becomes tedious. And if a child can actually do it and he does the test for that lesson and the, he was did well in it, well, then he didn't need to do all the exercises beforehand, clearly. Sounds to me like you got it worked out. I don't know what this, what Tracy said earlier on there. Can't work that one out. But I think I must say goodbye to Tracy to go and finish her fish and vegetables and potatoes. And I think I should say goodbye to the other people that have joined us here. Because I think everybody needs to get on. It's, ooh, it's 20 to 6. I think everybody needs to get on with their, their evening. Because it looks to me like we've got South Africans joined us today. Not so much uh, across the country, across the world. The last time we live streamed, we had some two or three from the UK and from Ohio in America. Tia was off to go. And my friend Tia in Ohio went to visit Dr. J. Wow of the science series because somebody asked me, I don't know if Rista is still there, I think it was Rista that asked me, what is the science series called? Do I know? And I said, I don't know. The, the ones that Dr. J wrote for the elementary years. So Tia went to visit him because she was watching the live stream while she was going to go and visit Dr. J. Wow the science author, and she asked him, what do you call your science series? So now I'm going to answer for you because she since sent me the answer. He says he calls it Science Through History. So now we know. Dr. J's science series for the elementary years is called Science Through History. We will make that known on the website some sometime. In the meantime, I'm going to say, also making dinner and watching on my cell phone. These ladies are making dinner while while they're watching the live stream. Do you know what? I'm so excited that I can actually be with you in your kitchen and I can talk to you while you're making dinner and you're watching on your cell phones. I take it it's working. It's going well on your cell phone. Otherwise, it wouldn't be working. So it seems like it's working, but even though it's working so well, I'm just so grateful you joined me. Thank you. It's nice to have been able to chat to you. Enjoy your fish and vegetables, Tracy. I hope to see you next time we go live. We'll put another notice on the Facebook live thing. We can't schedule it days ahead because of storms and because of ESCOM and because of all the reasons. So we will just do it like this. We'll give a 10 minute or a half an hour warning and say, heads up, we're going to go live in a half an hour, whatever it is. For now, thank you very, very much, ladies, for joining me. It was just very exciting to me to be able to be here for you and chat with you while you make your dinner. Enjoy your dinner, enjoy your evening with your family, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye.